Hey up, Toasty here from Games with Toasty, and today we are back, back, we are starting our playthrough of Pyre, which is the third game, I believe, by Super Giant Games. It lies between Transistor and Hades, and I have never played it. I have absolutely no idea what it's about. I think it is maybe an RPG, maybe turn-based, maybe not. Um... That's really all I know, and that could be wrong in and of itself. So let's dive right in. We have already pre-selected the standard difficulty. So the game shouldn't be all that difficult. So we'll see what happens. Looks quite desolate as a wandering caravan roaming the desert. And there is no narrator. That is unique for Supergiant games. When I think Supergiant, I think a really dashingly handsome man with a very nice baritone voice telling me what's going on. And unfortunately, that is not in this game. Therefore, I shall narrate myself. <laughs> Your days in the downside brought slow, lonesome agony. Now, as you lie yielding to the elements, something rumbles into view. Three shapes emerge, each clad in strange attire. Move your cursor here. So, I oh, okay, you can highlight. You can highlight keywords, and they will give you more information. So, the downside: a vast, a vast, a vast purgatory into which the Commonwealth casts its convicts and its enemies. None have been known to return from the forsaken land. Okay. So it's like a giant prison. Oh, masked woman. Okay, so I'm not going to read out the actual dialogue. I'm only going to narrate, so I'll let you read this stuff. Um, but I will read any of these new little majiggers here. So the Commonwealth, a proud country risen from the ashes of a fallen empire, home to a multitude of ethnic groups, founded on principles of mercy and kinship, whose exact meanings evolved through many centuries. Okay. Sounds like the British Empire. The masked something. Oh, we must be that someone. Don't be so glum. Looks like he's breathing. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. The masked wanderers presume you are male. Interact to change this. Oh, you can change the she. Or there. The masked, one, the masked Wanderers presume nothing about your gender. Well, that's very progressive, isn't it? I like that. Very subtle. You know, given the their, the, their pronouns. That's pretty funky. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a she. Because I typically pick female characters if I get the opportunity. She's a she? Can you people just tell? I mean, yeah. How can you tell with all the rags? Which I assume we're wearing. I assume that's us there. In that little uh, heap of burlap, by the looks of it, anyway. Broken, <laughs> broken, shaking, starving, probably diseased. Yeah, we'll look. Yeah, look beyond redemption, really, don't we? <laughs> After the others leave, the man turns toward you and begins unfastening his mask. That's a human. I like the art style, it's very nice. You are parched and he gives you drink. You ache and he binds your wounds. You hunger and he gives you food. Little by little, it helps. That's his name's Hedwin. He is one of the three masked wanderers who found you clinging to life in the downside. You sense no ill intent as he helps you up and leads you to an old black wagon. Nothing like the stately vessels that paraded Commonwealth criminals through alabaster streets. Hedwin beckons you to enter the black wagon. 
Hey, top. Okay, as soon as you can press tr square and it'll just progress events. You don't need to select them yourself. That's pretty cool. The weather beaten wagon is as much a mess inside as out. You see the masked woman and the talkative creature taking stock of ancient looking books. We are indeed back, and I am indeed a guest. She loosens the clasps on her mask. Jodario. Ooh, I like that. She looks like the, um, the, what was it called? The Val. The Val from, um, the Banner Saga. The giant horned giant people. Giant. Big giant things with horns. She looks just like that. I dig it. I dig it a lot. So, Dario, she is the most imposing of the three masked wanderers who found you clinging to life. The small one struggles with his mask. Jodario soon assists him. It's like a fluffy Mushu with a mask. No. It's like a fluffy... <laughs> it's like a fluffy Mushu from Mulan with a moustache. Rookie Greentail. He is the smallest yet loudest of the three masked wanderers who found you clinging to life. Such pleasantries out of the way, the horned woman then motions to the others. She glances at you sidelong as she speaks. Can we do what? I haven't asked her what. Do you know how to read? He asks if you are a reader. Reader. One who can derive meaning from text. Literacy has been prohibited for centuries. Those with knowledge of the old ways violate the law of the land. Okay, so reading is a sin. Okay. Sounds a lot like early Catholicism. Um, over time you managed to learn. Okay, well, we'll admit we can read. I mean, we've been reading this whole time, so we will admit our ability to read. You confirm their suspicions. There is no use trying to hide it now. Glory days. Okay. The exiles indicate the book in their possession. Okay, one of several such heavy, ominous volumes. The exiles you met seem very interested in them. Interact to learn more. You pick up one of the old and heavy volumes bound in materials you do not recognize. Very fancy. Yeah, we'll oh, so to inspect or interact, you can just press the triangle. Okay. A formal welcome undersigned by the eight scribes. You, dear reader, are an exile of the downside, such as we, the eight who wrote this book of rights. That you possess it and have the capacity to glean its words is testament enough to your potential. Thus we reveal a path from this forsaken place to freedom, a homecoming in glory. The stars themselves shall be your guide. Ere the turning of the year's first solstice, seek the nearest longitude beneath the brightest of the eight, as the line is shown. Arrive as a triumvirate, clad in the raiments of the rites bearing this book. Oblige the voice that tells you more. Okay. That sounds funky. They look like they're rocking out. Okay. The book describes a complicated method through which exiles can return to the Commonwealth. The words swim through your mind as Hedwin gets your attention. But then your vision starts to fade and blur. You feel your body weaken and give out. Darkness consumes you. Loading screens. Ooh, hello. Dare you tamper with forbidden knowledge? Ooh, hello. So soon after your sentence into exile. Kind of forced into it. It is true what the book says. You can be free again. That's handy. Perhaps not you yourself, but someone worthy of the privilege. 
You witness now the path toward salvation. Yeah. You witness the rights. The rights. The one way to return to glory. Though in your case, I hardly think it possible. Yet, by the grace of the scribes, it is my duty to inform you anyhow. Well, this was not expected. It, is, it seems to be true indeed. Where did the reader go? Why would we abandon you? We would be dead without your aid, you fool. You look upon the three of them from beyond as Hedwin then calls out to you. We aim to free ourselves, we will not grow old and die in the downside. That's nice, at least they're considering letting us go with them when we escape, if we escape. Freedom, your fo- you- you- <laughs> Freedom, you focus all your mental faculties to do as Hedwin asked. A celestial orb falls from the heavens when the time is nigh. Okay, we'll jump over there. Pick up the celestial orb. Exiles conduct the rites as a triumvirate, or they must prove their trust in one another, not just in themselves. The three must act as one. Okay, it's kind of like a very complex game of basketball. Or reverse. It's like reverse netball. Netball is that game where you can't. If you have the ball, you can't move a netball, right? But in this game, you can only move with the ball. So, yes, basically, it's like, it's like a reverse netball. Hold R2 to sprint. You know, when I bought this game, I was not expecting a game of netball <laughs> to be the primary gameplay. <laughs> Into the pyre! Boom! Yes. The exiled rookie has the way of it. Yeah, that's some painful. Into the flame is banished for a time. Being banished sounds painful. Because once you score, it's then like a 2v3, oh, right? But it is not so simple. Yeah, 2v3. In the rights, you shall face adversaries whose own freedom is at stake. I assume different uh, different matches are against different teams, not just merely in so. Use L to approach the atmosphere. I'm guessing if our aura baps them. Yeah, they get banished. The aura is your yeah. wrongdoing. Accept it as a part of you. Okay, so the bigger dude has a bigger aura too. Cast your aura like a stone. Oh, cool. Correctly done. Okay. Again. Just so. A glorious performance, I admit. Yeah. More than I expected from the likes of you. Grasp the orb once more. Take the orb once more. The orb absorbs the aura. Then the orb quenches the flame. Okay. So we're defenseless with the orb. Now I say jump. Ah, but you can jump. Leap which bypasses auras, right? Timer, right? Thus sails the orb into the waiting flame. Ooh. And then the previously banished person comes back. Now snuff out the adversary's pyre. Whilst yet burns. Whoops. <laughs> Try to be fancy there. The orb is loose. The orb is loose. What's oh, on a timer? Yay. The Dariel plunged into their pile. The orb. Okay, so the size of the person who scores seems to determine how much it's worth. We change character. 
Yes, we can. Okay. Up. How much is a uh, head worth? Right Twenty. Okay. So Rookie being there smaller and faster is actually worth less points now in the pyre, but Jodario and Hedwin are worth more. Interesting. This that makes sense. But a of that which Risky play ahead. rewards you with more points. I would tell you to turn back, cast down your hope. But all those such as you, you never listen. We never we we never listen. That is true. The others are still picking themselves up as you awaken. <laughs> Jodario leads you outside where a clear night sky awaits. Now, shows for the howlers catch our scent. Where shall the rites commence? Right, an ancient ritual competition through which the worthiest exiles regain their freedom. The eight scribes gave their freedom, so we may yet have ours. The prayer from the Book of Rites. Interesting. You gaze at the stars, seek out your destination. Okay. Um. Let's crack here. Right, so I'm guessing we're forced to go this star, right? At Gaul, the South Star. The South Star burns bright over a massive ridge of stone much farther than the naked eye can see. I mean, this looks to be the only choice, so we will go here. Two hundred leagues due east of Ridge of Gaul. According to the stars, the next rite shall soon commence here. The fossil remains of the serpent titan slain by Gaul Golfanian, yet loom over those living in its shadow. Gaul Golfanian. What a name. Very soon, according to the stars. Oh, very soon, according to the stars. You should be able to arrive in time if you make haste. Fly, you fools. <laughs> oh, well, Jodario being shot into Jody makes sense. Jodario turns to you, studying you. Why would we deceive you, Jodario? You gave us food, we are like a pet. A little more than a literate dog. Freedom, the rights are the key. It is a lot to take in. Your fellow exiles await you in the wagon. Join them. Ooh, trophy earned, the reader. For earning things. Oh, oh, it's also snowy now. What was it different for? <laughs> that was really cool. I liked the little, little hop of the wagon there over the hill. That was so cool. That was so cool. The Downside Prairie. This game is gorgeous. You arrive in the downside prairie where the road ahead is forked. There's a lack of consensus about which way to proceed. Okay, so the downside prairie is one of the downside's only verdant regions. It only gets less hospitable as you press further north. Okay. So Rookie wants us to take the northern pass. Oh, I like his um I like his new outfit. Very, very dapper. I've got an associate hold up in Holyrood. I've got a peer visit too, besides. Okay. Uh, the northern route to the Bridge of Gaul goes through a small exile encampment. Every so often, tempests come and scour away the huts and hovels, but they always crop back up. It's like the um, hur hurricane, tornado, corridor in America, I guess. Um, on a best we head to Blooming Pool. The southern route to the Ridge of Gaul goes through, a goes through a humid area pocked with hot springs. 
Runoff from the sand folds means no bathing in the springs, so they're just there to mock you. Can't get stuck in a bog with Radic, yeah. The dispute continues as Hedwin listens for a while. Yeah, okay. I mean, makes sense if by the deciding vote. And we are essentially deciding where we're going anyway. Everyone's changed. I just realized Judariel's got like a nice little like male ho like a plate male hauberk on. He's looking like a He looks like the guy from Journey, or the girl from Journey. And he's just an incredibly dapper Mushu. You may now choose a route. Ooh, okay. So this game seems to be very cool. It's almost, almost, almost like a visual novel in a sense with all the, the dialogue with like little interspersed gameplay sections. But I imagine going back through and playing like different routes through the game is pretty cool. Right, so uh, Rookie knows someone who owes him. Right, well... That doesn't seem particularly trustworthy. And Dario thinks she can find rare flora here. Okay, so it's sort of like go to an untrustworthy... Okay, so Rookie being a very small, almost thief-like character is the kind of impression I'm getting. Um, trusting thieves and thief associates who owe you anything is almost never a good idea. But going through a bog and getting stuck isn't that great either because you know you could fall into a giant pool and then get abducted by the undead although that might just be Frodo. Uh, I think we'll go to Blooming Pool because Jodario doesn't like her and I would rather have Jodario like us a bit more because uh, she's big and also scary. Plus I like thieves but I do not trust them. I love the wagon, it's so cute. Oh dear. Uh, Jodariel offers to show you around Blooming Pool after she notices you staring at the bugs and vegetation near the wagon. Soon something catches her eye. They shall pay for half of our trip. You find Black Bloom. It's quite valuable. Uh, this can be sold at the slug market and it's got a value of 30 coins. Blossoms at specific times, whilst bitter at first, a taste of the black bloom makes the pain go away. Okay. Well, we got through there mostly unscathed. Entirely unscathed, in fact. The black wagon grinds to a stop at the base of the Ridge of Gull. The others ask you to assist with making preparations for nightfall and the commencement of the rite. Commence the rite. Page revealed the first exile. Uh, okay, so we can go. We can just commence the rite, or we can go in the wagon. Well, we'll go in the wagon and see what the crack is there. So we can. There's a lot of things we can click on. Here. Well, what we'll do is. What we'll do is, we will leave it here. We will leave it here. It's been a good 25 minutes or so. So we shall leave it here and see what happens next time. Paya seems to be a very interesting game. It looks fantastic. The weird reverse netball basketball slam dunking soul flame of doom game seems really interesting. I'm very excited to see how that sort of expands and plays out. And I like the dialogue, I like the world, it seems really cool, it's very, it's got multiple choices and you know, it seems like a really good Super Giant game. You know, everything, every genre Super Giant seems to go for, they seem to nail um, fairly effortlessly. Although I do imagine there's quite a lot of effort that goes into it, but if your first attempt at everything you do is flawless, essential or near flawless, I mean, you know, you know you're, you're onto a winning development team right there but anyway we will call it here this has been Pyre and I have been Toasty remember to slap that subscribe button and to click that notification bell so you know when the next episode of Pyre or the next episode of anything I do crops up 
Also, please consider slapping that like button and also leaving a comment. Both of those things help out the channel an awful lot. And if you leave a comment, feel free to recommend another game that I can play on the channel. It would be great to hear from you and it'll give me an idea of what you want to see next. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. Happy gaming.